Catrum 7 360R. It has a 2 litre Ford Duratec engine which produces 180 brake horsepower. But because this weighs just over half a ton, it means it has 321 brake horsepower per ton. Now, to put that into perspective, that's 4.8 seconds to 60, which while you may not think is a grand old number for something of a, a small sports car, in reality, it's actually very, very fast. So fast that a Range Rover SVR will struggle to keep up with it. It has the Caterham Bilstein shocks front and back, and then it has quirky things like unequal front double wish bones. This specific one comes with 13 inch alloys with Avon semi slicks on, and let me tell you, while they grip in greasy roads, uh, they can be a bit of fun. Crazily, a fuel economy test, but a big fuel economy test. I've got about 400-ish plus miles to do today for a gig, and let me just turn the camera. I've got my base next to me, I've got some other stuff in the back. Sadly, not enough room to take the cab or anything like that, but I'm driving to my gig in a Caterham 360R. Let's go. Many, many hours later, I've arrived. I'm in Plymouth, that's 222 miles, which this did for 35 pounds. One thing I will say is that while it's not as comfortable as a conventional normal car, this is actually, considering it's track orientated, extraordinarily comfortable to be in on a long journey. That's four hours and my back's not broken. Good job, Caterham. It also has rack and pinion steering without power steering, which means dry steering well, you don't really want to do it. Now, a base 360 comes in at around about 25,000 pounds. But this one has a few options. So, it's got the factory build, that's two and a half grand. It's got a wider chassis, that's two and a half grand. It's got the R pack, which is four and a half grand, and that includes things like limited slip diff, lighter flywheel. It's got a carbon dash, 12 volt socket to charge your phone when uh, you're driving and you're using it as a sat nav. You get a four point harness, and then you get a black pack. 1,250 pounds worth of it is then the weather pack, which hilariously is doors and a roof. They're vinyl and they're pretty easy to install. But until you've done it a few times, it is a bit of a slog. The total price for this car is 42,470 pounds, which is a lot of money. But when you consider the fact it can do this, The bargain! Parking is an essential. Even in a weekend and track toy, you have to park up somewhere. I've just found space. Here comes not fun. And I'm gonna stay as far away from the curb as I can. Dry steering is normally quite easy in a car. <sighs> but not in a car with no power steering, no roof. Woo! What a workout. So, performance wise, yeah, this is insane. 321 brake horsepower per ton, which gives you that under 5 second 0 to 60 time which out of 180 brake horsepower 2 litre Ford Duratec engine is just insane and it is pin you in your seat performance and this is just ever just so usable on public roads however on a track is where this comes alive this is an absolute track weapon and while I didn't get to take it out on track, having experienced one of these on track as a passenger, I can vouch for the fact that it's very fast and keeps up with cars that cost double the amount. Practicality wise, it's surprising. So you expect this to not be very practical, you probably couldn't use it. 
chance to go to the shops at you can. See, when you've got the rear vinyl roof on, it turns it into a bit more like a hatchback. We're just going to uh, move away from this subject for one second as there is a tunnel. It does have some practical ability. The fact that it's got a 12 volt socket means that you are able to charge as you go along. The seats are quite comfortable and while the four point harnesses are a little bit tedious from, a, from an everyday point of view, it doesn't kill you, you get used to them. You fit into literally every car park known to man. The only problem comes is speed bumps. England likes having big speed bumps and I don't know why, but as a result, it means that you do bottom out every now and then. That's about it. Comfort wise, it's a very comfortable car. While the seats aren't adjustable, they don't break your back. There's actually enough padding to keep you comfortable. Then there's a heater, which is an option. The heater allows you to keep warm. There's no air conditioning. And being honest, when the roof's on, you don't need the heater because the engine heat itself keeps you warm. Say you're on the way back from track day, driving back, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you don't really want to leave all your stuff in the car, so you're going to go through the drive through Well, slight problem in that you're really low, these don't fold down and you don't have cup holders, but you're thirsty so you do it anyway. Here is how you take a Caterham 7 360R through a drive through Step one is get to the drive through Step two, is release the door which likes to fall down and it overcome me it's like oh, it's too windy today next problem is there's no cup holders so I'm not sure I'm probably gonna have to stop and drink this quick summary it's not impossible to go through a drive through in this it's not easy, especially driving one-handed with no power steering, but it's not impossible. Getting in and out isn't easy, but it isn't terrible either. And looks-wise, Caterham hasn't updated the look at any point. This looks exactly the same. The rear lights are my favourite. I do think they look very cheap and tacky, but the front now looks menacing, especially with daytime running lights on. The black pack makes this more sleek and more of a track based car. And then from a daily point of view, what can I say aside from the fact that I would 100% daily one of these every day of the week, come rain or shine. Regardless of the semi slicks, this is a fun car that every push of a button will put a smile on your face. It annoys me that there's road noise. It annoys me that I can hear everything that's going on. But at the same time, it makes you smile because this is just an insane car. It doesn't make sense. It's wild, it's wacky. And I'd own one every day of the week. Just for that. Just for the fact that you can pull out and do that. Yeah, I know, semi slicks. It's a little bit greasy. I'm now burning through them. And if it was my wallet, I wouldn't be happy, but you would, you would be happy with that. It's an insane car that's practical and impractical at the same time. That's, that will make you smile and make you angry at the same time. It's a car that, everyone wants to talk to you about everybody looks at this as you drive around kids are ecstatic especially in red it's a red race car and when i stop and i take photos or videos everybody wants to stop and have a chat and the question is always did you build it but in every single stretch of the word this is an epic epic machine and it makes me consider how much wilder the higher options are because this is this this is relatively mid-range and it's a handful. I drove it to Plymouth and back on the first day. I did over 400 miles. And while it does only have just over a 40 litre fuel tank, which meant you had to stop. And yeah, the fuel gauge is a bit inaccurate, i.e. you go down the hill and it shows you've got no fuel and you go up a hill and it shows you you've got lots of fuel. I wouldn't have wanted to drive that route in any other way. The headlights aren't amazing. Excuse me for one second. Uh, you can't see very far at night, even with main beam. There's no front fog lights. But the trip down there and back was the most fun and engaging trip I've ever had in a car to Plymouth in my entire life. 
and I am so glad I did it in the KTM 7360R because otherwise I would have been so bored on that journey.